In the 60s, about the time that golf first came to Jamaica, so did James Bond. Intrigue, excitement, mystery, it's still all here in Jamaica. Ahoy, matey! Well, welcome to Jamaica. We're right here with the fresh breeze off the Caribbean Sea at the Rose Hall Iberia Star Resort. Three different hotels on the same property on this spectacular beach, Montego Bay. They've got great restaurants, entertainment, and of course, the fabulous golf of Jamaica. And all the rest there is to do on this island that you're gonna learn about right here on The Traveling Golfer on our special show that we bring to you to tell you all about the wonders of Jamaica. American owned. Family operated. Five generations. Fiercely focused on one thing. Putting the best beer on the bar. Yingling, America's oldest brewery. We're with Tom Jaronski, the man behind Annie's Revenge, the Jamaica Invitational, one of the most famous pro-am tournaments in the world and so popular with so many players and one of the reasons, at least the one I know, on this great Iberia Star property, there's all kinds of 19th holes. But I think there's a little bit more of the golf end that makes it popular, and you can tell us why. Absolutely. You know, Annie's Revenge uh, started in 2006. Uh, it's a fantastic destination, pro-am tournament. Four-man team, golf professional, and three amateurs come down here to Jamaica and enjoy all things that are great about playing golf in Jamaica. So basically from the first hole, to the 19th hall, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a total immersion experience. I mean, where in a round, one round of golf, can you have tremendous views of the Caribbean Sea, incredible golf holes, the opportunity to taste cultural treat, of course, fantastic Appleton rum. It's all things that are great with golf in Jamaica. These golf professionals and their teams come from far and wide. How far, how wide? We've had teams come from Estonia, uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, Ireland, uh, we had uh, a, a team from Denmark last year, um, but the majority of the players come from the United States, which is Jamaica's number one feeder and market, Canada. and Canada. Right. And then we also have a growing uh, number of teams coming from the Caribbean region, other Caribbean islands. Now, I've been lucky enough to play in a couple of them, and I, I look forward to coming back. Friendships are made, and I've seen this among the other guys. That's a special camaraderie. There's no question, and I think as an annual event, one of the marks of success is bringing people back year after year. We may have the host professional who returns, but oftentimes he'll bring new members. So, you know, it really works for both sides of the equation. We're introducing new people to golf in Jamaica, but at the same time, kind of trading on that camaraderie and that energy, you know, which you've noticed firsthand. We talk about all the side things, but to be really honest with you, once the ball's in the air, it's a little bit serious, and one of the reasons is a great purse involved. Absolutely, you know, we have a purse that exceeds $30,000 U.S., which is a great purse, you know, for a, a, a pro-am tournament, an off-season tournament. Um, and one of the things that we do, too, is, is we break up the purse, right? So there's several different ways a professional will win. There's daily tournament, you know, daily sweeps. There's a 36-hole medal. And then there's payouts for how the team does. So if someone runs the table, it could be a nice, uh, a nice payout for the week. And it's also regular pro and senior pro too. That's correct. So you got all the age brackets covered. Absolutely, competition is key. You know, and, and these teams really enjoy that opportunity to play, but the way we run the, the tournament where it's a best ball format of the team each day, it takes a little of the pressure off. So you get the best of both worlds. You get to compete, but it's not like you're playing an individual ball tournament where the entire team is, is depending on your score for every hole. So that creates a nice balance. The more exciting the competition is, the better the event is for everyone. And you know, something that some people just don't ever get, and I never understand it, is that while there's a lot of fun that we had playing golf, the essence of golf is still competing. And there's some people no that are afraid to do that 
Once they do, they say, wow, it just yeah. opened another whole chapter in my golf love. Right. And that's what happens right here in Jamaica. Annie's Revenge, the Jamaica Invitational, Tom Jaronski. We're on the patio of the very quaint clubhouse at Cinnamon Hill, not Blueberry Hill. This isn't Fats Domino. It's Cinnamon Hill, a great 50-some-year-old golf course here in Jamaica. We've got the director of golf both at Cinnamon Hill and the sister course, White Witch, Keith Steen. Keith, welcome to the Traveling Golfer. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Well, Keith, obviously you're a native Jamaican. No, not quite. <laughs> No, you, not quite. I've been here a while, but not quite, no. And you grew up in? I grew up in Toronto, Toronto, that, Canada. That's it. A very similar climate to yeah, here in absolutely. Jamaica, right? Especially in the wintertime, yes. <laughs> but you also spent a little bit of time in an interesting place. I lived briefly in Australia before I moved to Jamaica, yes. Well, yeah. Keith, you've got two beautiful <laughs> golf courses. I played them both in Annie's Revenge. They're different courses, but I love both of them. Tell us a little bit about the courses and what you love about them. The White Witch, we get compared a lot to Kapalua. When the cruise ships come rocking through here, it is, it's, it's <laughs> something else. It's, it's beautiful. Obviously, we have a lot of elevation changes. Uh, Cinnamon Hills on the water. The White Witch is more up on the, on the hillsides. We have 16 holes that uh, overlook the ocean. Yeah. It, it's fabulous. Cinnamon Hill, the older course, was built in the 60s, but it was redone after 2000 by Robert Von Hagee, the yeah. same guy who did the White Witch. That's correct. Well, there was a lot of engineering that had to yeah, go into that, that one. That was a tough piece of property. They moved, uh, gosh, we moved a lot of dirt to build that golf course. That might have been maybe the very end of the, the grandiose golf courses before the mm -hmm. Crenshaw, Bill Core got into the minimalism kind of, you know, kind of deal. Like we just had bulldozers pushing dirt there forever. It was, it was a massive undertaking. We're here with Siebert Walker, the head professional at Cinnamon Hill. And Siebert, I'm looking for a little bit of inside information on this great golf course. Hole number 14, that hole actually has our famous uh, Johnny Cash has on host. Right Johnny on, Cash the singer was Johnny right on Cash, hole 14. Johnny Cash the singer, and that place was his home for most of the year, probably seven months out of the year. And he come there, relax, and makes those great music that he does. And how about your favorite hole on Cinnamon Hill? Our favorite hole would be number five. That's mine too. And it, it's hard not to be because you're looking straight down the Caribbean Sea. It's a breathtaking uh, tee shot, and um, coming up for your second shot, it's even a more adventurous um, par four. A few balls get lost in the sea on that hole. You bet that. With that t trail wind that, you know, you, you hit it uh, with any little side spin going left and you're gone. Now, Siebert, as a native Jamaican, how has the game of golf been received in Jamaica? Well, uh, over the years, uh, golf has developed um, somewhat. We had Johnny Walker back in the 90s. We have been lucky to have within 15 minutes of our here, three wonderful golf courses. From that, a lot of locals are finally seeing and knowing a lot more yeah. about golf and getting involved. One of the things I've noticed, Keith, is when the guys come down to play in this huge pro-am that the Golf Connection puts on every year in Jamaica, they enjoy the differences on both the golf courses. And even though they're tough golf courses, they're able to get around and play them uh, in a comp competition without being tortured. That's correct. We can set them up, you know, we, we can put the hero tees back there, or you can play it a little bit forward, which is was sort of a theme these days. It's not difficult. Well, Tom, the heart gets pumping when you get up here on the 17th tee. We had a couple of pretty good shots into the green here. I find that to be very fortunate because you can't get much tougher than some of the shots here at the White Witch. And this one on number 17 is a one of the most memorable par threes you could find anywhere, I think. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, you know, looking out at the blue Caribbean Sea out there. I mean, you know, you almost don't want to hit the shot. You just want to stand here and look at it. I love this vantage point to talk about the entire course in general. 660 acres yep. on this course, obviously carved out of the jungle on the mountainside here. Talked about this as an amazing 
engineering project Absolutely. to make you see it. As you know, Tony, I mean, this is a target golf course. And I think, you know, a number of the players, the teams that come down and play in our program every year, they come out here and think, okay, you know, it's, it's like playing back at home. And, and this is a, a golf course where you need to place every shot in certain positions. You know? That's why the slope is so high, because of the visual intimidation. If you can block it, you can get around this golf course. They take what it gives it, and, and they usually find that they got a better score. What a sight here from the 17th tee of the White Witch with the Caribbean Sea behind us, the jungles, the mountains, and the man that brings us to all of it, Tom Jaronski and the Golf Connection. We're with the general manager of the Iberia Star Grand Hotel here at Rose Hall in Jamaica, Daniel Ginas, originally from Spain, the parent company, Iberia Star from Spain, but has been in Jamaica for five years. How do you like it so far, Daniel? Very much, very yes. much. We've got a wonderful hotel here. Thank you. And of course, it is the home of the Annie's Revenge Jamaica Invitational every year. Now, being general manager of a five-star hotel like the Iberia Star Grand, the rooms are of the highest quality, the lobby, all of those things. But I know you spend special time on the food at the Iberia Star Grand. We do have uh, four specialty restaurants, uh, and we have our main buffet. Uh, we do have a higher level of cuisine than, than our sister uh, properties at, at the Grand. On property we do have also a spa where, where they love to go, have a massage or a treatment and it is all inclusive. They, they find many things to do. You added one of the most beautiful pool complexes I've ever seen. That is an entertainment area all to its own. Also the fact that we are so close, the building is so close to the ocean and the pool, entertainment and, and activities, it's, it's, it's a great ambience that we create. It's all set against this Jamaican musical backdrop, the rhythms and breezes of Jamaica. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice place to work. It is, it well, is very much. Thanks for having us here. Thank you. For Annie's Revenge and also this special traveling golfer show in Jamaica. Welcome to your official history lesson. We have Director of Golf, Spencer Edwards. Welcome to the Traveling Golfer. Thank you, Tony. Well, Spencer, the entire experience in Jamaica is something, but you have to understand where it all started. And it always starts with a pioneer. Yeah. Our pioneer who brought golf not only to Jamaica, but the entire Caribbean was the great Robert Trent Jones, the great architect. He built this course in 1964. 1964, 10 years after the Half Moon Resort opened. This was originally Sugar Cane Fields. Uh, the original clubhouse back then was the Sugar Mill Restaurant as it is now, and we still have the original Sugar Mill Wheel with royal palms that were planted way back then, long established into what we see behind us. I don't think people realize how much of a pioneer Robert Trent Jones was, but not only did he bring golf here to Jamaica, in a short period of time, he built courses on St. Kitts, St. Croix, four in Puerto Rico, two more in the Dominican Republic. It was an amazing amount of work that he did. And of course, this Half Moon Golf Course has remained as an iconic course in Jamaica for years. We've had five visits from Buckingham Palace. Uh, as a result, the Queen has stayed on two occasions, uh, Prince Charles has stayed on two occasions. Kennedy stayed here, and, uh, and more recently, uh, George Bush. Senior. And, uh, yeah, and yeah, senior, and he played the golf course. Of course, a new event comes here, and it's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's the Appleton Estates shootout at Annie's Revenge, and you're hosting it. We are, for the first time, and uh, we're excited about that. Yeah, and this will be on the back end of the Annie's Revenge Jamaica Invitational, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun the way you're setting this up on this course. I have a fondness in my heart for some of the old Robert Trent Jones designs, and I've heard about this one for years, so we'll have to give a look. Yeah, this is a, this is a classic. Lucky number 13, ready to give it a try. This golf course, again, 1964, but Roger Rulowich did a great job of redesigning it, renovating yep. it. And uh, this is one of the examples, a little 
stepped tee, uh, but it's really a classic Trent Jones golf course. Yeah, this has been described that Half Moon is very much Jamaica's Augusta. That's the way that it feels. It's a tree-lined golf course with royal palms lining the fairways. If you hit it into the trees, you'll generally find it and you can play it. Big white bunkers, well-placed, large undulating greens that when we quicken them up as we can do with our turf iron, you can have some Augusta-style putts. And we host the Jamaica Open every year in the same way Augusta hosts the Masters. Well, there's nothing wrong with being able to find your ball when you hit it, especially a resort course. Yeah. So that's, that's something very special. Now, the terrain here is what I would call gently rolling as opposed to some of the more mountainous courses nearby. Yeah. Well, we're, we're mandatory caddies here at Half Moon, and this is the best walk-in golf course in Jamaica. So not too much in the way of elevation changes, but as you can see behind us, we have got a little view of the ocean behind, uh, and the sun is shining, and it's another day in paradise. Well, it's a great looking hole. Let's have at it. Okay. That's a peach, as they would say in Augusta. That's hunting the pin. Good shot, Spencer. All right, Spencer, I guess I'm gonna have to chip one in for birdie. Oh, she didn't break. Tony, I said 13's unlucky. It's been unlucky for you, my friend. Ah, uh, as, it, as it always is. Great putt, great birdie. Throughout our special show from Jamaica, you've heard us talking about Annie's revenge. Annie Palmer, she lived in this 300-year-old great house and now supposedly haunts it. Is it true? We'll find out. Annie Palmer moved to Haiti with her parents when she was 10, and her nanny who was a voodoo priestess. Now Annie's nanny died when she was 18, so she moved back to Jamaica in search of a wealthy husband, and apparently she got lucky because she met and married John Rose Palmer to whom this house was built. Now this plantation back then was 6,000 acres and had over 2,000 slaves working on it. Even though Annie had such a vast plantation, she ruled with an iron hand, and she wasn't very happy. Now we're in the upstairs of the great house. This is where Annie Palmer lived, loved, and eventually died. Annie Palmer had many tricks up her sleeve. When the slaves served food, they had to whistle as it was proof to their master that they weren't sampling any. She had three husbands and she killed them all, along with many slave lovers. Annie really was evil. She'd tell the slaves of her deeds, have them put the bodies in the ocean, and then shoot them as a cover-up. Taku, though, one of her slave lovers, took revenge and killed her in 1831 of December. So Annie's been dead many years, and guests have come and said that they've seen her and felt her. Her spirit lives on. You know, Tom, Golf is a heaven or hell type of game. Right now, I think we're a little closer to heaven. We're halfway there. Wow, what a view. Tony Leodoro's golf wardrobe, courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Welcome to my place, man. There can be only one number one. One outperforms. One outplays. The one shot. The one moment that separates one from the rest. That's when one redefines distance. That's how one earns number one. R1. The one driver played by more tour pros than any other. From TaylorMade, the number one driver in golf since 2001.